Hello for you Twist Video Tour and welcome to the 16th stage of MLC Worlds of Spania. And today is gonna be another exciting mountain stage. And I don't see anyone finishing solo today. It will be a sprint for this one for sure. But after Chris Anderson's win yesterday, I'm so hyped up for today's stage. Is Jacob Forsen gonna go in the breakaway and maybe do something for Nibbly or is he gonna win the stage? I mean, if you're a Dane right now, you gotta be so proud. I, I know some nationality shows out in me, and I'm supposed to not be a biased commentator, but that's not every day you see a guy like Cass winning a stage. Today's stage is not really worth a go in the breakaway, because I can see the big guys duking it out in the end. They're running out of mountain stages, so guys like Nibbly and Valverde need to try and work together to beat Quintana. Quintana's been shown to be a really good talent, and we'll be seeing more of him next year. Can he beat guys like Froome? Like, I know Froome's taking a vacation and not showing up to Vuelta Hispania, but if... Froome in the shoot Italia versus Quintana, it's gonna be a good battle. Oh, we actually have a tag already. Oh, that's Sergio Hinao attacking. I was talking about him yesterday, how he was not helping Oran at all. And Vada Pulse is attacking with Denny's Menchov. Speaking about experience, back from the Rabobank days, and they're getting followed up by Frank Slick. <laughs> More experience right there. Where does Andy Slick again? I mean, that joke never gets old. Those two guys are like glued on each other. <laughs> they're so bad. So this this breakaway is actually really strong, and they're not getting followed up by by Kreuzvig. They cannot allow this. This is a really strong breakaway, and it, like guys who want to win the stage cannot allow this breakaway. Because we saw that when Bettencourt won the breakaway, he won the stage. And now it's pretty much just like Bettencourt. And when you have guys like French, like Denis Menchov, Vada Pols, and Kreuzvig in the breakaway, they're doomed to win this. Like they're so strong. And another guy is trying to follow up. It's Igor Anton and Sylvie Chavanel. What the heck is going on? This is very big names trying to win the stage. It might just be a break. Breakaway victory after all then. Pretty much anyone in this breakaway can win today's stage. And that's also why the Peloton are keeping quite a high pace just to keep them in without within those six minutes that they believe they can catch in this mountain. But they need to step it up just a tiny bit, because I believe around four minutes would be good. Six minutes is kinda too much. I mean, you we're talking about friends like Dennis Menchov, Igor and Ton, Sergio Hinao. I mean what that's a that's a lot of big names. You gotta keep them closer than that. But Team Joker can be like, hey, you know what? We have the red jersey. We don't even need to focus on this. I mean, you are all like half an hour behind me. So why would I care for you guys? But I guess they're like, Quintana's just showing so much strongness so far. He's, he's so strong. But all everybody has a boink point. point. Everyone is going to lose their efforts at some point. And Nippoli and Valverde is going to be ready when you lose that. Quintana, but we, who knows? We'll see. Quintana might just be this super guy called Froomtana. We'll see. Some guys just know they're not good enough for the finish, that they have to try in the middle of the stage. And once again, it's our friend Peter Village trying to attack. This time he's got company by Rui Costa, Thibaut Pinot, and Christopher Horner. These four guys, they won't win the stage. I mean, come on. The breakaway's only got around 4 minutes in total with 60 kilometers left, and we see the Team Joker's really going hard for this one. Come on, you're not gonna win it. I know you gotta take your chances once in a while, but at least take him more smart. Like, go on the breakaway instead, on the breakaway stage. I mean, this is just a waste of your efforts. I know stuff can happen, Alberto Contador can crash again and stuff like that, but most likely it won't happen. We'll see. Just imagine if Quintana actually crashed. That would be such a shame. What the? Huh? Uh, uh, Quintana just attacked out of nowhere on this downhill after the category 2, not even at the top. He saw that Samuel Sanchez was giving it a go, and he's attacking. His young spirits is attacking, and he's got the entire Pelton pacing for him. He's got Eva Bosen Hargan and Phil Schilbert pacing for him right now. This is laughable. Why is Quintana following this? It makes no sense whatsoever. He's using efforts right now, maybe trying to do something. If this works out for Quintana, he is a beast. He's reacting to everything. He doesn't care who it is. If he he sees someone that's got potential and he thinks, oh, I can use this to my advantage, he's attacking. And so far it's, it's worked out for him, but at some point it's not going to. The, right now the breaker has got 2 minutes 15 in total with 29 kilometers left. It might hold, but it's going to be right in the line. All these guys have a lot of left in the tank, but it's the question is, does Nibali and Valverde have even more left in the tank? Looks like Valverde did not want to use his team to try and catch up to Roger Earp, to Quintana and Samuel Sanchez. So he has to go by himself. So right now he's up here and he's doing the smart move. This is what Nibbly should have done. But it looks like the Pelton is going to reel him in again. Jungle Jair is doing their best. And so is Fulsang and Bardet. They're all trying to do their best to catch back in. They actually used a lot of efforts on this. This might have been in Nibbly's best interest not to attack. But speak of Nibbly, where is he? Where is Nibbly? 
I don't see Nibbly anywhere. Oh, he's down there. He's sitting so far back. This is not good at all. Because right now, Quintana's attacking with Valverde and Sanchez. It looks like Sanchez. No, not Sanchez. Valverde is going to be the biggest competitor to Quintana, which we said all along. But right now, they only have 20 seconds. It does not look like Nibbly's taking this joke serious. He does not care about him. And then from right now, there's still seven men out here. The four-man group never caught up with Pino Horner and these guys. They never caught up to him. They still got a 30-second gap. Oh, and they, oh, they've been caught again. The Red Tios has been caught again. Nibbly's now, Nibbly's now taking them serious, and he's gonna attack with Betancourt. Oh, but he's falling the wrong wheel. Betancourt is not fast enough to follow this, and he's swinging out on the side right now. The front group has still got a lot of time on these guys. These could actually win over 15 kilometers left, but I doubt it because this six-man group is catching up fast, and they're going so fast. But who's that? Wiggins. Wiggins is tempoing it all the way up here. He can actually win this stage. So this is one of the stages that's not too difficult for a guy like him to win. Oh, and the peloton is pacing right now. They want to catch back up. Uran missed out on the front right there. This is one of the big favorites who missed out actually. Where's Pocket Molima? Pocket Molima should be attacking right now to see if he can catch up his spot. Roman Bardet is pacing right now. They're attacking up here again. Wiggins is trying to set the pace in this little downhill section right now. This mountain is not steep at all. So, a lot of guys have chances in this one. There's no definite champion or least favorite in this one. Everyone's got a chance. We also see Contador is catching up right now. And they actually called this group and there goes Nibbly. Nibbly's off and Quintana's badly plays. Quintana's going no actually no he's not going. It's Nibbly's going. But Nibbly stopped. Nibbly's got a gap. Oh he's taking water. What is he doing? He's slowing up but so is everyone else. 18, 18 seconds. 30 seconds difference. Nibbly's leaving Quintana behind. 20 seconds. Now Quintana has to pull all by himself. But in the front we have attacks from Andy Slate. Not sexy. Frank Slate. Daddy's man chop. And he now, he now wants to do something. He was probably waiting for Ron to catch up there, but he's not. Nine kilometers left. This is going to be such a strange finish because it's going to be so flat. But there's Nibbly. Nibbly's got a good 45 seconds on Quintana. 50 seconds. All those attacks from the other guys are coming back to haunt him right now. A minute gap was created. It's so fast. He's attacking again. Where is that going? Chibop Pinu finally caught up. Will Tubbs will Flander and get something back. They're not trying to get back in that oval team classification. But it's too late. They have to get more time. Nibbly's got time now. Nibbly's pacing along. He's trying to take as much time as he can. And Chizabuke Bahama and Gamara just had a puncher. Nibbly's going. Come on. Go Nibbly. Go. 40 seconds down to Quintana. He's trying to catch up to Quintana. He knows he has to work for this, but so does Valverde. Valverde is trying to help Quintana. In the front right now, it looks like Chibop Pinot might be the strongest. He's catching up right now, but so is the group with Nibbly. And there goes Quintana. He realizes he has to go by himself. He's using a lot of efforts, and he just caught up just like that. He used all his efforts to catch up. Now it's the perfect time for Nibbly to attack. But no, why is he slowing down? Why is Nibbly slowing down? It makes no sense. He should be counterattacking this. Why is he not? But in the front, like Chibop Pinot is going to be battling with Dennis Menchov. Chibop Pinot looks like he's going to have a more left in the tank than Dennis Menchov. There's 50 man group. And Wiggins is going. Nibbly's trying to go. They're actually sprinting for this. Quintana's as well. Where is these guys? Oh, it's going to be Pinot in the front. There's so much action right now. It's difficult to keep the camera steady. It's going to be Pinot sprinting for this. But Dennis Menchov is not going to be able to follow. The victory is going to be Chibop Pinot. But more things down there. Hey, let's see if we can see the yellow or the red jersey group. There are Vatapos in the front. Vatapos is going to go for this. Nibbly's going to go for it as well. He's going to get bonus seconds. He's going to take the green jersey. But Contador's up here as well. Nibbly's going to take that green jersey away from Alejandro Valverde with that 6th place finish. That was, I told you, that this would not be a one-man sprint. It would at least have two guys, and it did. It was the strangest finish in a long time. But this mountain makes no sense because it's so flat. I mean, it's got no steep percentages at all. But guess, I'll see you guys at the podiums. Tops will flander and take a lot of time right there. Not only did they get the victory, but the overall team classification, they caught a lot of time right there. Nibbly didn't end up not gaining any time at all. That is a shame, but Quintana showed weakness right there. He followed everyone, and that was just his young stupidity and his bad decisiveness. So, if he does out the Angolero, he's gonna boink, and he's gonna lose up to 10 minutes. Contador made his way back into top 10, now 9th. He's moving up again. He can actually he can get up to 5th place. If he rides good, he can get into 5th place after being all the way out. And the green jersey, only 4 points difference. That is so close. There's like... That's going to be close. Valverde and Nibali are going to do that one out. Even though Quintana has a red jersey, he's not been that good every stage. Like, he just had one stage where he did really good, got a lot of time difference, but the other guys have been consistent. Chris Sanger, Sorensen, and Bittencourt is probably going to battle out for this overall mountain classification, but that's going to require Chris Sanger, Sorensen to go in the breakaway again, and he might do that in the upcoming stages. Because there are stages where they're coming up, we can get like 10 points, and then you only be 3 points behind, which is really close. Oh, Quintana's... He's just dominating the young guy's classification. Get on his level, guys. And uh, Top Level Flanner might have gotten some time, but so did Garmin Sharp. They're now having a lead of 15 minutes. GG, Garmin Sharp. You're winning this one. Guys, 
Thank you guys all for watching this stage. If you like my content, please subscribe. If, please leave a like. Please leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys later.